Ah, the dreaded polar vortex is back in social media circles. So what exactly is it? And what impact will it have, if any, in the weather in your backyard? I'll let you know, coming up, next. Welcome back, everybody, to the Weather Nerd G2 page. I'm meteorologist Greg Majeski, and before we get started, we always like to thank all the new subscribers to the channel as we continue to grow and move in the right direction. We're currently up to 1,268 of you, and if you haven't yet subscribed just yet, please consider it. Join this family. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell so you're alerted on future content, and give me a thumbs up. Leave a comment down below. It really helps with trying to grow our channel. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at what you need to know for this edition. All right, first up, we're going to talk about what is a polar vortex. I'm going to give you kind of a definition of what it is. We're going to look at the current state of the polar vortex as far as the cold air that's currently up in Canada and in the Arctic. And then we're going to also take a look at the jet stream forecast because that kind of drives the weather across the nation. And if we get those dips and valleys, that's what allows some of that cold air to potentially dive south. And then finally, we'll look at the long-range projections as far as temperature and if we do get an outbreak, just how cold could it potentially get? We'll take a look at that as well. So with that said, let's go ahead and take a look at what exactly is a polar vortex. So as we take a look at this diagram here, we can look and see what exactly the polar vortex is. It's a cold air aloft. We're talking way up in the atmosphere, in the stratosphere of low pressure circling around at the poles. And when it's strong and stable, it pretty much stays up here in the Arctic regions. Now. When we get weakness in the jet stream and we get some warmer air to kind of flow up toward the north, we call it stratospheric warming. And when that happens, that can weaken the polar vortex and cause it to wobble and shift out of its normal location and as a result cause cold air to dive down into parts of the United States as well as into areas of Europe. So what we're looking ahead for January is, is that in the cards. Are we going to get a weakening of the polar vortex, a shift in the jet stream, and will that allow some much colder air to come down into the United States? So with that, let's go ahead and take a look at the current conditions across Canada. So by Canadian standards, as of this recording on December the 30th, it's definitely a far cry from being overly cold across the area. I mean, we've got a polar air mass here across the eastern third of the United States. Uh, but as far as really cold Arctic air, most of this is up here well to the north across the Arctic Circle and areas well to the north. And most of Canada is uh, fairly mild by their standards. But as we go forward in time, things are really going to change as we go through the next week or so. Think of cold air like this. I'm going to take a bowl, I'm going to fill it up with water, and eventually that bowl is going to reach capacity and it's going to spill over the side. Cold air is dense, it tends to spread out over time, and eventually this cold air is going to be on the move. So, with that said, let me go ahead and get myself out of the way here. I'm going to take you forward here through time here, and I'm going to take you forward about a week. We're going in about seven days, and watch how things quickly change as we go through the next seven days. A lot of the state or the country of Canada gets covered in this purple. We're looking at a very large swath. We're talking temperatures below zero, you know, upwards of 20 below zero, some very cold temperatures. And eventually some of this cold air is going to die down here toward the south as we kind of get little chinks in the armor and the jet stream to allow some of that cold air to kind of come down. So watch what happens as I go forward beyond the seven day here. Now this is more of a projection when you go beyond seven days, you're seeing the storm system there, we're seeing a, a little bit of cold air starting to funnel in, we're starting to tap some of that cold air and we're bringing it, it southward into the plains and across the country. That's heading toward like the 9th of January. And then as we go further out in time, you see again another series of this you know, nice little cold so we've got a very strong uh, area of low pressure. That's the Hudson Low. It's kind of a semi-permanent feature we see during the winter time. And you've seen some of this cold air kind of rotate in down toward the south. We're also seeing a little bit of warming taking place here off toward the west. That's some of that stratospheric warming I was talking, telling you about uh, earlier. So uh, this is going to allow that polar vortex to kind of wobble and move around and allow some of the cold air to come down toward the south. Now, if you can recall back in February of 2021, we had a situation where a lot of this chunk of cold air up in Canada decided to move itself down toward the south. I don't think we're going to see anything like that. Uh, we're just not in a position with the overall pattern that's going to allow a you know, big area of high pressure to allow this thing to kind of just dump here toward the south and kind of park there. We had a couple of areas of high pressure 
We had one over here, and then we had one over here off Alaska uh, that kind of allowed what's known as an omega block, allow a lot of cold air to come on down. I don't think we're going to see that going into January, but we are going to see these progressively colder air masses kind of dump down as we go through the month. Now, let's go ahead and shift over and take a look at the jet stream and see how that's going to evolve. We're going to take a bird's eye view from the, nor the northern hemisphere. So what you're looking at right here is a bird's eye view of the jet stream. We're looking over the northern hemisphere, kind of looking at from the North Pole, looking down toward the continental United States. And one thing you're seeing here on this initial run as of December 30th is the fact that we've got these little eddies in here, but you generally got a fairly stable uh, location of the polar vortex. You kind of got it sitting in here. These are the little eddies that are kind of rotating around in here, uh, but it's fairly stable. And as I progress through time, the couple things you're going to notice, I'm going to point my attention to here, is uh, this very strong jet stream is going to remain in place. In fact, it's going to get even stronger. That's why I'm not expecting what I was calling that omega block. That's what allows the cold air to kind of dump down in the United States and kind of sit there for any length of time. I don't see that situation, at least the way it's currently looking, setting up. But I do see the weakening of the polar vortex enough to where it's going to allow the infiltration of several air masses to kind of come on down. So as I go ahead and take this out, I'm going to take this all the way out to the end of its run. It's going to go all the way out, which is going to take us into the middle of January. And when I get to this last position, a couple things I want to highlight here is I'm seeing an area of low pressure up here. I'm seeing the strengthening low, that Hudson low down here. So it becoming kind of elongated, kind of going kind of like this, like a figure eight almost. Uh, through there. So that's going to allow that cold air to kind of uh, waffle back and forth. You notice the very strong jet stream still sitting here racing in across the Pacific. And because of that, I don't know if we're going to get any of that kind of ridging you need to kind of allow a situation like this to set up to where you get to a, a, a real good cold air mass to kind of come in across the country and to just sit there. I don't think we're going to get that, but we are going to see some colder shots to come down probably one a little bit colder than the next as we progress through the month. So just how cold will it get? Well, it's a little early, but we can still kind of take a little look and see how much colder the air mass will get across the lower 48. Let's go take a look. So we're looking at the American GFS model. We're starting on January the 2nd, and I really wanted to kind of illustrate just how mild the most of the country is by January standards. Only again, seeing a few regions here, seeing below freezing temperatures for daytime highs, some areas here across the high plains, uh, a little bit here into New England and areas of the inner mountain region, but most of the country looking pretty mild. But as we go forward here, and again, anything beyond seven days, I kind of refer to more as a projection, but I'm looking at forecast trends here. And it's what, the only thing I'm noticing is this like, progressively colder shots is coming down, especially across areas across the West, at least the way it's looking currently. That can always shift a little bit, but you get the idea. Let's go ahead and get it out of the way here. And I'm gonna step you forward here through time as I go into deeper into the month of January. So as you see the time stamp there down below going through the third, uh, you're seeing the, uh, some colder air kind of filtering in as we head toward the fourth. You're seeing the cold air across the south. So we get freezing temperatures here across the area. Most of the cold, real frigid stuff is still up here toward uh, Canada for the moment, but it's not going to stay there, folks. It's going to be on the move as we progress further and further into the future. So going into the 6th and 7th and 8th, you notice some changes there across the areas of the west, especially uh, as we go into the... Uh, day of the 8th. You notice in this colder air kind of sitting in here, it's really starting to spread out and more and more purple showing up here on the map with that really sub-zero type temperatures that are going to be infiltrating, especially in the west. And it really kind of spreads out uh, as we go heading toward the 12th. Look at by the time we head into the morning of January the 12th. That's on a Friday. Seeing a big chunk of the country seeing temperatures uh, with sub-zero freezing temperatures Got a pretty good cold front moving right through here. And eventually that'll squash this out with the mild temperatures across the deep south. So uh, again, going forward, look at how much colder it is going into the, the, the 13th. Uh, single digits there across the middle portion of the country. Uh, some very frigid temperatures, but that's what you would expect for January, okay? Uh, we definitely could not call this uh, you know, record-breaking cold by any stretch, but it is definitely much, much colder. And we're going to see that several shots of those kind of coming in 
as we head into the month of January, heading toward the middle of the month. And you're noticing here uh, temperatures just to the north, uh, seeing 25 to 30 below temperatures just there off the screen. So uh, as we go deeper into the month of January, you're going to see this progressively colder shots. If the polar vortex remains weak, that means we're going to see uh, continue to see the waffling of the temperatures from uh, kind of a few days to a few days in these colder shots progressively coming down. Okay, let's go ahead and wrap this edition up. We'll take a, kind of a look ahead and see where the potential snow could fall over that period just to wrap things up. So it's not overwhelming when we take a look at the next seven days as far as potential snow and really that's all that matters. Anything inside seven days and we can look at that. So we get a little bit of snow perhaps here across areas of the southwest. So kind of right in here, we got some storm systems providing a little snow here across the, the Inner Mountain and some of the Sierra Nevada on the west coast, some snows in. Uh, a little bit across New England and uh, some of the Appalachians getting in on some snow action here over the next seven days. Nothing overly dramatic, but what gets fun is when we take it out beyond this, going all the way to the end of the model run where that much cold air kind of infiltrates the country. And just for fun and kicks and giggles. I'll take this all the way out. It's not saying it's going to happen, but it's something to kind of watch as a lot of the country here looks at the potential for some snow uh, over this period as that much colder air moves on in. And you notice that we're going to see a lot more of the country covered in the potential for some of this white stuff. Now, does this mean everybody's going to get this? No, but it does mean is that we're going to see colder temperatures that will allow the potential for snowstorms to develop and impact areas, especially beyond, say, January the 8th. So between the 8th and the 15th, we'll watch that very closely. Now, if you want to get updates on this, the best advice I can give you is to subscribe to the channel. I'll continue to watch this religiously, give you updates as we get closer to this so go ahead hit that subscribe button hit that notification bell leave me a comment you got something you'd like to see go ahead and uh, post that as well give me a thumbs up and uh, we'll continue to watch this closely it's gonna be a fun month of january uh that's for sure we'll see how that cold air uh, moves into the country and we'll see exactly where potential snowstorms may line up for us that's it for now for your update you guys take it easy easy i should say have a great weekend and as always have a merry happy new year is that such a thing? Yeah, why not? Happy New Year. We'll see you in 2024. You guys take it easy. Bye-bye for now.